respond uh, to the ongoing conversation rather than just uh, the questions that have been submitted. Uh, so please, if you do want to get involved, uh, that is the hashtag uh, to use. Uh, I'm now going to introduce, uh, hand over to our cabinet members who can introduce themselves and tell you about what areas of the council they're responsible for. Do we start with Councillor Sarah Merrill? Sarah, sorry, you're just on mute there. Must do. Uh, oh, we've lost Sarah. We've just lost you for a second. There. Okay. Uh, okay. Can we just try Anthony? Yep. Hey everyone, my name's Anthony Perica. Um, I'm a councillor for Woolwich Common Ward um, and I'm your new cabinet member for housing. Um, obviously my responsibilities fall in line with um, repairs, um, homelessness and the council's house building programme. So I'm really excited to be taking this position and, and working with you all to kind of see how we move the council's agenda forward. Perfect, thank you Anthony. Over to Siswe. Dan and hello everyone. As Danny said, I'm Cesar James. I've been on the council since 2014. I represent Thamesmead Moorings, which is where I grew up. I went to nursery, primary and secondary school. And my portfolio is environment, sustainability and transport, which is a whopper, and brings responsibility for waste collection and disposal, maintaining our public realm, air quality, climate change, and all things transport. I suppose my immediate priority is delivering the council's street space programme to support social distancing, cycling and walking using COVID-19 emergency funding for measures such as uh, footpath widening, mobile filters, school streets and temporary cycleways. Perfect. OK, thank you very much, uh, Siswe. And we're hoping Sarah will be back uh, to join us shortly. Uh, now, the first question, we have a number of questions in today. Thank you, everyone who sent them in. The first question comes from David Marriott and is to, uh, is to use his way. Uh, and David is asking two things really. Um, David wants to know why we haven't got the Santander cycles uh, in the borough uh, and can we get them? Uh, and is there any other opportunity for people to hire uh, bicycles, uh, particularly uh, dockless bikes uh, in the borough? Um, regarding the first issue, it, it, co it costs a lot. I mean, if you remember, from a few years back when we asked this, it was going to cost two million pounds, um, so which was too much, and it's too much in the current situation, but we're going to ask in the current circumstances, and uh, we can ask TfL whether they could uh, possibly do it on a temporary basis. Um, regarding the Dr. Spikes hire, uh, London's councils are coordinating a London-wide bylaw on behalf of all boroughs uh, to assist with the responsible management of Dr. Spikes systems. Um, we're engaged in this process, but as you can imagine, it's been delayed uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And our immediate priority is for our limited resources is the implementation of our street space programme. Perfect. Thank you so much. Obviously, just to um, say uh, to everyone um, that when uh, Sisway says it obviously uh, costs £2 million, when the programme was initially rolled out, uh, some people uh, did have to, some boroughs got the whole scheme for free and others uh, have had to pay and that's been uh, the issue for us but obviously uh, we are doing uh, doing what we can um this way just keeping on the transport theme we've got a number of questions in really so um, i'm going to stick with that for a moment um uh, a gentleman called peter owu has asked uh, that obviously we've seen the plans about widening footpaths and pavements uh, in woolwich uh, but what about plumstead uh, and what about areas uh, who've got narrower roads uh, outside of town centres and are we able to extend uh, any of our schemes to that? Yeah, thanks Dan and thanks uh, Peter for the question. I'm sure that's on uh, many of our residents' minds. Um, but the bottom line is we've prioritised our three town centres as they're the ones with the greatest uh, football. Uh, we aspire to extend, extend social distancing measures uh, throughout the borough, but um, with our limited resources, we've got to be focused on where we allocate our resources. And um, regarding the second point, um, looking at the possibility of a bike loan uh, scheme and setting up bike markets over the summer uh, to assist residents uh, in their ability to access uh, bikes at low cost. Perfect, thank you. Um, and Sarah, I'm delighted you are back with us. Um, sorry that we lost you. Um, if you could just unmute yourself and introduce yourself so everyone knows who you are. Oh, did you not hear any of it? Oh, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> so I said that I'm Sarah Merrill and I'm the cabinet member for regeneration and planning, which is self-explanatory. Great, thank you very much. Okay, um, a question now um, about housing um, from uh, Val Hughes. So Val has asked, um, when is housing going to be back in action? Now, housing, um, uh, I think Val was, Val was actually due to move house and has been uh, caught up in, in the coronavirus pandemic there. Um, Anthony, do you know anything about that? Is that more set, one for Sarah or Anthony? Um, I, I, I can take that. Um, obviously, very sympathetic to that, what Val is going through. Um, we, we want to hear from everybody. So if I can ask Val to send over her details of the search, for the property and we can pass that onto the relevant service and then they will be able to establish where it is in the system and the time frame for the completion and then we the council will kind of liaise with her um so I, I think that's the best approach there is a slight delay in dealing with some of these things but um obviously with lockdown going on we're going to try and see if we can work on it as quickly as possible okay thank you uh, very much um We've now got um, a question uh, also, uh, another waste question, uh, a number of those have come in. Um, and this one is from uh, a man called, uh, I'm not quite sure of the name, sorry. Uh, it's a Twitter handle actually, sorry. Um, who's asking when rubbish collection will resume uh, in Shooter's Hill. Now actually we have been uh, collecting rubbish all throughout um, the whole of the pandemic. And I do want to pay tribute to uh, our waste service. We've really been doing fantastic uh, work uh, and for anyone uh, uh, who is on uh, my um, Twitter feed uh, today we published uh, a lovely someone left on top of the bin uh, a lovely uh, knitted uh, waste vehicle uh, with a thank you sign on it it really was amazing actually so uh, whoever did that thank you very much because that uh, certainly cheered uh, the whole uh, team uh, up and um, now we've got some live questions as well coming in um, from uh, the Eltham Enviros on Twitter and um, their question is we don't see any cycle parking plans for Eltham uh, on the website. Uh, will the council be prioritising safe cycling uh, lanes in Eltham uh, as well as other parts of Greenwich? Uh, Siswe, any updates on that? Yeah, I mean we've put, in, yeah, thanks Dan, thanks for the uh, question. We've put in a, a bid for, a, for three uh, cycleways um, which will complement the one, the TFL cycleway four, which will you know, eventually allow top, from Tower Bridge all the way to Woolwich uninterrupted. Um, but it goes from Eltham High Street or Eltham to um, Greenwich Park, which will then feed into uh, the, the other main um, cycleways. Okay, perfect. And um, is there any plans um, to publish that report this way, which will outline uh, in more detail, the, the bids that we're making uh, for funding. Uh, thank you, thank you, Dan. Yep, um, that will be on the website uh, by the end of the week. So if you can uh, keep an eye on that, you should be uh, you will be updated. Yeah, and just to assure everyone, I know, I know we've had a number of um, complaints that we haven't uh, been able uh, to publish uh, a report yet. It's not uh, that we're hiding anything or not being uh, open. Obviously, we've been trying to really focus on actually getting the work done. So. Uh, we've had the team uh, out uh, in Eltham, Greenwich uh, and Woolwich in terms of implementing uh, those big schemes uh, as well as installing the ones uh, around the borough now that we're really motoring on. Um, we will, but people have asked for that detail so we'll try and, and get it, but obviously a number of people um, are also uh, staff-wise affected uh, by the pandemic so uh, that hopefully explains that. Okay, now moving on to another uh, housing question. Uh, Anthony uh, for you and, and hopefully Sarah can also join in because we've had some experience of this in Shooters Hill. Um, what decisive action uh, is the council now taking to address the growing problem of beds in sheds across the borough? This problem is very often um, linked to profiteering uh, on the part of unscrupulous people who are ex exploiting the shortage of housing. Um, Sarah, do you want to say anything on that? Got that awful uh, well, it's a planning of enforcement issue and um, the cases that we know of in our own ward which is Shooters Hill of course um, planning enforcement has been active on now for a considerable amount of time there is a legal process that has to be gone through 
so it can take some time and can be quite frustrating and um, information can be confidential so it's difficult to keep people as updated as we'd like but it's a planning it's a planning enforcement issue and um, we're well aware of any uh, of issues um, that there are issues across the borough and if you know of specific ones then please let us know and our enforcement team will get straight onto it absolutely and i just want to sort of emphasize i mean um really what sarah said is we share people's frustrations because it can be a very uh, very frustrating process and and in our own world we have seen uh, a number of cases where people have really uh, pushed the law to the nth degree to get away with uh, get away with things uh, there's a second question also here from tony who says how does the council propose to address the issue uh, of buildings we built in gardens which are then used as homes uh, or rented out uh, shortly afterwards is, is that another planning enforcement one sarah yeah yeah it's somebody's um creating a structure in their garden and then they're basically using that as a habitable dwelling for it's just like beds and sheds it's exactly yeah. the same and yes it's not lawful and it's a planning enforcement issue okay so any of those concerns please make sure that they're fed through and we'll make sure um, if I could ask the comms team who are online to feed through details in the chat uh, about who to contact and what, what numbers best, uh, we can uh, pick that up. Um, now we had a question here from Nigel, which I think we've already answered, which was about um, publishing our plans for uh, some of these. So thank you, uh, Nigel, for that. Um, the second question here um, is. Um, also from Nigel, uh, in February, uh, the council consulted residents on a series of boards around public realm and urban design improvements to Woolwich Town Centre, um, which would contribute to a new uh, Woolwich master plan. Um, and uh, that master plan was obviously delayed uh, due to the election. So um, Sarah, are there any plans that you know of to uh, republish or reconsult on a new Woolwich master plan? No, it's been held up slightly by the um, the pandemic, of course, um, and um, we're we're going to be publishing the find. We're going to be publishing details really as soon as possible. It, 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 you know, is all I can say on that. And obviously, we, we would have been ahead of the game, but we're, we're behind. Yeah. And uh, Anthony, as a uh, Woolwich uh, ward councillor. Um, obviously, you were very involved in the Speak Out Woolwich campaign, um, originally around uh, the Mayor Holmes uh, Tesco Tower, which the council uh, successfully just de defended uh, at, at appeal, uh, and we've we've had that decision uh, upheld. Has that been? Uh, how? What's the feedback been from residents in your ward about that? I mean, I would say residents have been delighted with the outcome. Um, it's one situation whereby people have feel, feel that their concerns and the issues that they've raised have been listened to. Um, but equally, I think people in the local area are really welcoming of housing and we want to be a part of all processes that bring housing forward in the area. Um, you know, we, we, we live in Woolwich Common and uh, we want to be a part of that process and feed into not just what comes forward, but the design and the wider um, landscaping around that. Okay, thank you. And Sarah, obviously, um, you were the chair of planning uh, at the time when that uh, all uh, unfolded. So you must be delighted with the result. And it was your uh, board which uh, upheld, which which took that decision to reject the scheme. Um, based on on, I guess, the sort of the whole um, uh, the whole appeal process. Um, what what would you say to uh, any developers who are uh, watching? Uh, particularly in relation to Woolwich, which is you know, a busy town centre with, with a Crosswell uh, station. Uh, what's the message, do you think, that we should be saying to people that's come out of that? So, I think, and I'm not just saying this, um, developments have got to start, well, have got to cater for the existing population of, of Woolwich. Um, there's, we, we've got a, a, a worldwide movement at the moment. I know I'm white, but Black Lives Matter um, has 
an impact here. We have um, a sizable multicultural population in Woolwich and I think we need to cater really carefully for the existing population and we can't start building where we plop parachuting new populations that can use our transport as commuter routes into central London. We have a defined existing population there and we need to start developing on things that are going to benefit them. And I, I mean, and I mean that. I mean, and Danny knows I mean that. And I've spoken to Anthony about it and, and, and Sisway. So that, that's not just sort of verbiage for the sake of this. Um, it's, it's a concern that I have. How has, Anthony, I, know, I saw that you uh, had released uh, a very moving statement online um, in relation to your thoughts on uh, the murder of George Floyd and, and Black Lives Matter as a protest movement uh, in general. Uh, have you had many inquiries from residents about you know, your own personal perspective, what the council is doing, what they want you to do? I think um, it's fair to say, you know, although we are a very diverse borough, we have so many satellite community groups um, and amenity groups in different areas. And from what I've kind of seen, there are little pockets of discussion going forward, which is really helpful and healthy at the moment because these are difficult discussions to have but at the same time it's bringing people into a learning process about how we move forward and within my own personal as a counsellor you know it's a discussion that is happening with community groups but also linking to the work that we do with counsellors so I think it's worthwhile um, I found it very worthwhile these kind of discussions but I think for the council and, and for us as counsellors it's how we draw out that and you know bring that into some of the policies that we're making and bring that forward and obviously you've been doing work with a lot um, on the Ronnie Meady Trust Report, which you kind of put out there, which is great. And we want to kind of build on that to kind of make sure that we can see the change that we're all talking about right now. Um, you know, it is, it, is, it is taking time, but I'm really happy and I appreciate everybody that's contributing to that debate right now. Sis, how are things down in Thamesmead? You're just on mute there, Sis. Yeah. Oh, no, it's just I'm muting my answer. No, I mean, it's, it's difficult, Dan. Um, I mean, it's very disturbing, but I suppose we, as a council, we need to constantly focus on, you know, as Anthony said, what policies, what can we do to make a difference? And, and you know, we, it may not be, you know, we can't change the world, of course, but there's going to be some concrete pieces of policy we can put into place that's going to make a difference to, you know, what is it, 140,000 uh, BME residents in the borough or something like that. So it's a, it's a huge number and we, we want to take the lead uh, in the borough and I know that you're, you're working hard to, to, to set us in the right direction. And uh, as Anthony and Sisway both referred to that, that work that we did uh, with the Running Mead Trust, um, and they are the UK's leading uh, independent think tank, so it was important to have uh, an independent perspective. Um, we did. We began that work last year. Uh, and it identifies very clearly uh, where we're in a whole number of areas, from education outcomes to community safety issues. Uh, the outcomes for our black residents are just not good enough uh, in many areas. Uh, and actually, we'd begun uh, prior to the pandemic some work, particularly around uh, community safety uh, and also those educational outcomes, to uh, work with a whole range of partners about what actions we need to take uh, to address them. And we're gonna continue that work. And for me, I think um, people will know uh, that COVID has had such a massive impact uh, and a disproportionate impact on black communities. Uh, and we've been doing a lot of work with uh, a man called Kevin Fenton, who's the Director of Public Health uh, in London, who's been really leading that London conversation about what, what has happened, what do we know, uh, and what action do we need to take uh, to address it because actually uh, the really significant and devastating uh, impact it has had uh, you know has just been uh, such an eye-opener uh, and in many ways uh, Covid has kind of shone a light on the inequalities that we already knew uh, existed in this city so uh, this really is a moment for everyone uh, to not just uh, stand back I think take a look at what they're doing but also commit uh, to what they're going to do uh, in future uh, to close uh, that gap. Now we've got a number of questions uh, coming in uh, online. Uh, the first question uh, is from Caroline Walsh. 
um, Caroline's asked about uh, how we're going to co-design uh, this way those um, spaces and the, the street space works that we're doing uh, with disabled people. Um, hopefully that's something that CISWAY can take on. Uh, obviously at the moment, Caroline, just to reassure you, um, so much was happening uh, so quickly, particularly uh, where, where the council aren't in control of announcements. So uh, we really are uh, living from one 5 p.m. press conference to the next, I'm afraid, uh, about what bits are opening of the economy and, and what's happening when that we're having to respond to. Uh, and that's why uh, also everyone, you know, on some of our uh, emergency school street schemes, for example, we are having to, uh, you know, proceed without as much consultation uh, as we would have done uh, previously. But I also hope that we really recognise uh, and people buy into the fact that this is a moment in time uh, and we absolutely do not want uh, a car-led recovery uh, from COVID. Um, and Sarah, I'll bring you in uh, in a bit to talk about some of your thoughts about um, the kind of the opportunity for a green-led recovery uh, in regeneration terms. And, and I think people would enjoy uh, hearing uh, about that. Uh, we've got a question here uh, from Maria, who asks, um, will the council housing for the proposed site uh, include provision uh, for disabled residents? Um, well, actually, Maria, a lot of our council housing, uh, and Anthony can, can update, uh, does include uh, space um, for uh, residents who are disabled and uh, fully accessible homes. Anthony, are you able to say any more there? Uh, sorry, I think, yeah. take, take myself off mute. Um, yeah, like, we are trying to make sure that we implement um, um, a lot of um, the facilities in some of in some of our council developments that include um, housing for disabled people. And actually, one we're bringing forward housing. What we try and do is work with our occupational health um, kind of officers to make sure that it's suitable for the needs of people who have disabilities and learning disabilities and we're obviously really proud of the scheme that has just been brought forward um, which was approved by planning committee um, for housing dedicated to um, helping people with learning disabilities so we're looking at having a so much um, disabled housing in all of our schemes thank you very much anthony uh, for that um, and also um I've got two questions here, one from uh, Darren and one from Jackie, who are asking uh, about drug problems. Um, there's no specifics uh, on the question, so I'll just say uh, that if you are aware of uh, drug uh, dealing or uh, antisocial behaviour linked to drugs uh, in, uh, in Greenwich, then please do uh, let us know. You can let us know confidentially uh, and also let the police know uh, by calling uh, 101. Uh, and also do make... Um, those confidential referrals into ward councillors as well, and we can uh, pick those up. So thank you uh, for those questions. Uh, now back to uh, transport, uh, Sears, and you're back in the hot seat, uh, I'm afraid. So this one is from Helen Warner uh, on behalf of the Westcom Society. Uh, Helen uh, wants to know um, that she's keen to see uh, some improvements um, to uh, streets in Westcom Park, Blackheath and East Greenwich. Uh, so a bit like Plumps did. Um, how can we uh, potentially roll out some of those temporary measures uh, into those uh, areas? Um, and also, uh, how does the council intend to monitor uh, the temporary schemes uh, across the borough? Okay, uh, uh, thank you, Helen, for the question. As you know, uh, we've already implemented the measures in our town centres, um, and we're in discussions with TfL about the delivery of temporary cycle, temporary cycle route on a Greenwich to Woolwich alignment, as I mentioned in my previous answer. So that, that will, of course, improve uh, social distancing at bus stops. Um, in terms of the more residential areas, uh, we've previously, uh, we're provisionally planning modal filters, and uh, namely barriers that prevents uh, traffic and allows free movement of pedestrians and cyclists. Um, these will create um, low traffic and neighbourhoods, um, regarding monitoring, uh, this will be undertaken by officer inspections and user feedback as we uh, progress. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sis. Um, there's another question come in uh, online uh, from Els May. Els has asked um, about that Els hasn't been able to pop into one of our cent uh, centres uh, in order to pay uh, council tax. But actually, Els, the good news is that you don't have to pop in. Uh, you can actually 
actually uh, either pay online uh, or you can pay by telephone. Uh, and the number to call is 0300 332 0202. Um, so, and you can also pay uh, by internet banking. So, uh, there are all those uh, pieces of information are available online. And I'll ask the comms team just to put that in the chat uh, function, please, so that we can uh, see those links. Um, now, um, Anthony, the, I've got another question here, sort of related from uh, Louise. Um, many residents are obviously experiencing a significant financial hardship at the moment. Um, if someone's worried about paying their rent, uh, what do they need to do? Well, we want to hear from all of our residents at the moment who are going through difficulty um, with their rent payment. Um, very early on in this, and the council made a commitment that we would not look to evict um, tenants who have been affected by COVID-19 from our properties. However, what, we've, what, we, what is really important that we have tenants engage with us um, over any payment issues so that we can put in place plans that help them um, to kind of maybe collect some, 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 some of the money and, and kind of stagger those payments. And we also have a letter that has kind of gone out to residents which will um, advise them that if they're struggling to make up their payments, that they should contact us so that we can help them with that and also find out if they have any um, benefits that kind of um, they, they could draw on like universal credit and other, and other, uh, other kind of benefits that could help them throughout that process that they're going through that hardship. But obviously what we, what we want to do is the first thing is call us, get in touch with us so that we can understand your needs and specify our help to your needs. Great, thank you very much. Um, and the second question um, there is around uh, the current situation regarding um, delays in universal credit payments. Um, now, obviously, I would like to apologise if anyone is experiencing a delay. Um, please get in contact with us and our teams, and certainly your wall council will pick up um, any issues. Just to give you a sense of uh, the challenge that we're facing, um, prior to COVID, um, I think the average uh, or the, the most uh, applications for um, uh, universal credit that we'd ever receive in one day uh, was about 20 to 25. Uh, in the pandemic, uh, we've had up to 280 applications a day. Uh, so that's a significant uh, rise in demand, uh, which obviously shows just um, the serious impact that this has had uh, on the economy. Uh, we will be uh, working really hard uh, with everyone to make sure that they do get uh, access uh, to the benefits that they need. Um, and please uh, do get in touch if, if you are having issues uh, and we'll pick that up. Um, got a couple of questions now online. Uh, a question from Sandra Bauer, who I know uh, has been doing fantastic work as one of our community hub volunteers. So thank you, Sandra, for what you've been doing. And thanks to everyone else, uh, thousands of volunteers who've been uh, signed up. And the community hub has now had over 60,000 calls uh, from Greenwich residents, which is uh, absolutely phenomenal, uh, really. And Sandra's asked about what, what next for the hub. Now, that's a really good question and one that we are uh, talking about uh, internally because I think what the hub has demonstrated is actually we know we're going to have more poverty coming out of COVID. Uh, and certainly we're really concerned uh, about the impact of the furlough cutoff and, and potentially more people being made uh, redundant. Uh, and actually that food um, distribution uh, that's been happening and, and uh, I've had feedback from people to say what good quality food uh, for such, uh, for such good, good prices frankly uh, has been fantastic um, and I guess we want to look at how we can continue that. Um, the, the fascinating thing I suppose in, in many ways about um, COVID um, has been uh, and I was talking to GCDA about this just this morning, it really highlighted from a food point of view um, just who had skills and who didn't. So I looked at some of the boxes of ingredients that we were given out right at the start and thought, what would I do with this? And actually, uh, I can't make a flatbread. Uh, my fajitas are pretty good, but my, uh, my baking skills are not. Uh, and actually, uh, that has become uh, something we really need to reflect on, is, is how we're gonna roll out um, cooking skills, but you know, basic living skills that people have, have really uh, need uh, in this pandemic. And also, um, I know Sarah's um, really keen for um, this type of activity as well, is we, have, we know the value of allotments and actually allotments are a brilliant way to not only uh, grow healthy food, but also bring communities together. 
uh, and actually how can we create community allotments and new developments uh, as, as you know a social interaction as well so uh, hopefully that is something uh, that we can uh, pick up on um, so that will be uh, coming back now uh, the next question um, is on uh, regeneration uh, and this question coming from uh, Bell Greenwich um, and was about um, whether or not we were continuing uh, to press uh, City Hall for a pause in relation uh, to the Silvertown Tunnel. Now, obviously people uh, know that this is an issue that I mean, many people are concerned about. We've explained uh, really that we've exhausted all the powers that we have uh, as the council in relation uh, to uh, the tunnel. Uh, and actually now we're focused on really working hard with the Mayor of London, not just on the Silvertown Tunnel, but how we are gonna address all of those wider uh, environmental and air quality issues uh, in our city. Uh, I think all of us have absolutely uh, felt the benefits of less cars moving around uh, the city. Uh, indeed, uh, some of us have even taken up cycling. Uh, Sisbo was a very active cyclist before uh, the rest of us. Um, and, and I guess it really raises the question that now is the time um, for us to uh, really be putting uh, a flag in the ground really and saying that we want a green-led uh, recovery. Uh, from coronavirus and that's not just about transport that's about many wider issues and, and Sarah I know you've had some thoughts on that really in terms of the direction of travel. The direction of travel generally for regeneration you mean? Yeah in the context of I guess the importance of a green-led recovery and, and what yeah. what this moment in time means for us. Yes so um, there's always obviously we're always looking to generate growth in the local economy but now this is facing us of, of course a new challenge there um that there, there are going to be people who've lost their businesses or or um lost their jobs um and now so i'm very very keen that we have a, a sort of a green new deal and we regenerate the economy locally um based completely focused on the carbon neutral plan so we're working up some ideas at the moment in regen so are you still there skills across the borough um, and sourcing locally local materials for construction and building and the projects that we want to develop and um, and, and, and also, I think what's really important is, um, Danny alluded to this earlier, is the importance of as much local food production as possible. And that's something else that I want to develop. And I think it's really, um, I mean, we get a lot of um, questions and, and lobbying really around, um, I guess, what we're doing to make the bar carbon neutral, how we are uh, taking forward those aims. Um, that being said, I can't tell you the amount of uh, angry emails we get about school streets and why am I going to be locked in and what does this mean uh, for me and it's such a such a difficult balance really that we have to uh, strike because in the end uh, we do not want um, you know a borough that's totally filled uh, with, with cars um, and I guess even some of those small-scale behavior changes uh, have absolutely uh, massive implications and I know um, I've got a question here uh, from Joe Turner uh, who's asked about what the benefits are of school streets and and all I would say is is this really is that when uh, when we started the first queue and we had them at Hamo uh, which is the primary school I used to go to as a kid actually and we said oh I'm going to get locked in I'm never going to get uh, never going to get out what happens if I have a heart attack how do the emergency services get in just to assure everyone that on those bollards that go up at the end of the road um, actually the emergency services always have a key uh, that can get in uh, and actually what we uh, have made clear is that any schools who introduce them, if you, uh, if you need to move in that time, then the school uh, will open the bollards for you so that you can, uh, can leave. And, and change is always hard, um, but actually in those areas where we've rolled, the, rolled those uh, schemes out, they really have been absolutely fantastic. And I would say that there's nothing more annoying um, than you know, parents who disregard uh, the local residents when they're dropping uh, kids off. Uh, residents who, uh, you know, school visitors who park uh, on zigzag lines and, and endanger uh, children's lives as well as 
uh, make for a really bad start to the school day. Uh, and I'd really hope that residents can support us on the school street scheme because it's, you know, it's an hour uh, at the start and at the end of every day. Uh, and we can we never make a, a change if we don't all uh, make a contribution uh, to making that uh, change. If you are interested uh, in having a uh, street uh, and you've got some ideas, then do, uh, do let us know. Um, and that would be really, uh, really helpful. Um, a question here um, from uh, Mervyn on Twitter, um, who's asked uh, about uh, mobility scooters uh, and actually a proper footpath. So we'll try and pick that up. Uh, since, wait, I know there's been a lot of emails about um, scooter trials, actually. Uh, do you know any, do you have any update on uh, that, that scheme? Yeah, I mean, the government are doing a, uh, there's a consultation at the moment. I think the, the deadline's July, uh, so we'll be um, we're in the process of putting together a response to that. Okay. I mean, it's something, it, there's, there's mixed mute views about them, but, uh, I, you know, I, I think they are uh, an option, but one of the issues is where, where they're, they're, they're allowed to go uh, very fast. I mean, I've seen the, uh, speeds of about 40 miles an hour if, if they're, I forgot whether they're delimited or something like that. So, but it's something that we're looking at and we'll be responding to the government's consultation. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, and there, there's a question online here um, about when um, the Cold Harbour uh, Adventure Playground will reopen. Uh, thank you for that, Zola. We don't uh, don't know at the moment, I'm afraid, in terms of playgrounds, and we'll have to wait and see what the next uh, phase of lockdown uh, looks looks like. Um, it looks like um, there's just been a, a, an announcement um, uh, about uh, the Prime Minister, I'm just trying to read this here, from uh, single adult households uh, will be allowed to form a support bubble uh, with one other household from this weekend. Um, and they can uh, visit each other's homes and, and don't need to stay uh, two metres apart. Uh, so we'll obviously have to uh, get into understanding uh, what all of that means. Um, it's clear that we're moving through the phase uh, now uh, of lockdown. Uh, and if you're feeling anything like me, <laughs> Everyone's just had enough. It's really hard going, uh, and we need to just kind of uh, thank everyone for the efforts uh, that everyone uh, has collectively made. Um, I still have another Nando's. I didn't have one last week, and that's my uh, ambition for the week now is to find a Nando's that's open. Um, now we've also got a Grizzlies in Plumstead. That uh, Grizzlies in Plumstead, uh, which serves you know quite similar Nando-ish type food. So try that one out there. Right. Local business. I'll get down there uh, and, and get uh, get supported. Um, Anthony, there's just one other question here as well um, that was about um, obviously the council's house building program uh, has it stopped uh, during lockdown, um, and what plans do we have uh, to talk to people about the next uh, the next sites? So um, to be honest, um, the teams have been still kind of working away. On, on, on the proposals for Greenwich Builds. Um, and we're quite excited about that because we want to be able to push forward as quickly as possible with that to make sure we're getting as many council homes built as possible. I mentioned earlier on about the application that has just come forward, but we've also, that has just been consented by the planning um, department. But we have also just finished consulting on two further schemes and we're currently you know, taking into consideration what people um, have said. Um, as well as that, we are proposing, we're pushing forward with our, um, our other schemes and still designing them up and also looking to get consultation on that very, very soon. So there's still a lot going on and we haven't stopped and we're still pushing ahead. Um, and our officers have worked really hard to really adapt their ways of working in the pandemic um, and with the restrictions kind of implemented. So as we kind of keep, keep moving forward and looking at our 750 housing, we're still working with our partners like Meridian Homes to build more housing and looking ahead of that, how we start to come up with other ideas of how we get more housing um, and Greenwich housing stock and build more homes in Greenwich as well. And that will probably look further on past the 750 at some point. Okay, great. There's also a question from Keith Lawrence, who's asked about when the council's housing offices will reopen. Um, so at the moment, they have kind of been closed. Uh, we don't have housing offices, but we do have um, we do have the um, the council offices in in Woolwich, um, and you can usually go there to raise issues. But obviously, if you wanna if you wanna um, 
speak to us about housing, the best thing that I would advise is to call us um, and then get in contact with us. Perfect, okay. Um, there's a question uh, here from David uh, Nunn uh, to you, says. He says, uh, the Transport Secretary talks about cycling revolution, but I live in a block of flats with no lift. Uh, I've kept a bike in communal areas before, but been told it's a safety. Um, how will the council help encourage housing associations such as LNQ uh, to provide bike storage places to residents? Um, uh, thanks for the uh, question, David. It's a good one, and I suspect there's many residents out there who ha are thinking the same, have the same uh, question. Um, and in this instance, um, the council invites residents to request uh, secure on-street cycle parking. Um, if you look at our website, there's a map of the current and planned secure cycle storage locations. Um, uh, but bike storage is typically a condition of new planning applications, it's something Sarah we've dealt with plenty of times uh, as the former chair of planning. Um, but in existing developments, uh, residents are required, uh, um, asked to uh, go direct to the housing association, and perhaps um, if it's a serious issue, contact your MP. Okay, thank you. Um, we've now got, um, there's a question on my uh, Twitter feed which has come through uh, from uh, the murky depths who'd asked uh, about camera enforcement um, and uh, powers that we uh, have acquired. Obviously uh, this all sort of happened prior to uh, the pandemic and those uh, cameras have been, uh, uh, sorry, the, some cameras are being installed uh, so actually one of the schemes that we're going to be going live with soon uh, is the uh, around Plumcroft School uh, which is um, an area uh, that Sarah, Chris, uh, with War Councillors and Shooters Hill have worked on uh, for a long time. Uh, and actually, uh, we've tried, we've had police officers uh, enforcing, we've had traffic wardens enforcing, uh, and actually uh, that hasn't worked. Um, so now we will be bringing in uh, cameras outside uh, the school gates that will basically uh, be able to enforce against people uh, who, uh, who drive uh, illegally, frankly. Um, and, and that's where we're at. And we're hoping, uh, obviously, to be able to roll uh, similar schemes uh, out uh, across the borough um, and, and to deal with some of those parking violations that, you know, this isn't about, um, you know, being a big brother uh, council either, uh, but actually when you are doing uh, that kind of thing outside of school, it has a really detrimental impact uh, on the kids uh, and the neighbours. Um, now we've got another couple of questions that have just come in uh, live. Sorry, my other screen has gone. Um, we've got one here from Mark Holliday. He says, how does one report a neighbour using a flat as a business premises who lives elsewhere? Well, uh, that uh, does not sound uh, like good news at all, Mark. So uh, please do get in touch with us uh, through our switchboard number, uh, 0208 854 and we will be happy to uh, pick that up from you. Um, a question here uh, from Stephen O'Connor. Uh, Stephen says that there needs to be a concerted effort to remove excessive bollards and railings in the borough. Uh, recent changes to the street scene along Plumstead Common mean that there is no blister paving to delineate a crossing point if you're blind or partially sighted. Um, so uh, this is where if you could pick that one up, uh, that would be uh, helpful. Uh, now it looks like that's the end uh, of our uh, questions. Um, we haven't had uh, any more uh, coming in. Um, so I'll just hand over to everyone uh, really for uh, a few uh, final comments before uh, wrapping up. Uh, Sizwe, can we start with you? Uh, just, yeah, thanks Dan. Uh, just to say, look, um, please bear with us, especially on the streets uh, space programme. We work as quickly as possible, but as you know, there's funding uh, issues and you know, perhaps the government have been playing games uh, with TFL around funding, but we're going to we're going to get our schemes out as quickly as possible. But we've had to concentrate on uh, uh, our town centres because that's the areas of greatest footfall. But we are that is going to filter or um, out into uh, the, the smaller high streets and side streets, etc. But please, we are on it, and we're going to try our best to make um, Greenwich an excellent place for walking, cycling, and uh, social distancing. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Anthony? Yeah, um, I would just say, um, first I want to thank everyone for their involvement in Arts Greenwich. Um, I, I want to make the point 
of that this is a difficult period for us as a council, um, especially the housing department. Many people that we house, you know, are going through real difficulty at the moment, either because of the lockdown or the restrictions that have been placed on people's in work. Um, in terms of housing, I would say, you know, if you're struggling, really do get in touch with us. We want to hear from you as early as possible so that we can tailor any need, um, any, any help towards your, your current circumstance. And I would say, you know, we're pushing ahead as much as possible to kind of build council homes. And I would ask for everyone who's interested in that process to engage with the consultation. Even if you don't live in the area, we want to hear what you feel about the houses that we're, be that we're building. Um, so participate, get involved and, and, and feed into the process because often most people don't. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anthony. Sarah? Thanks. I'm not muted, am I? No. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to reiterate really what I said before that we are working hard in the regeneration team on ideas to stimulate the economy um, completely focused on climate change. And that's anything from big ambitious projects, which will take some time to bring to fruition down to smaller projects. Um, uh, but, but, but both will develop uh, local skills and will be completely centered on um, local supply chains for materials. And I'm also interested in developing the food um, local supply chains as well. I just wanted to reiterate that. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, there's two questions that I missed, which I'll just pick up. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, for both from uh, Eltham and Viros. Uh, one who's asking uh, about bin uh, stickers for residents to opt out um, to uh, stick on their bins, we'll happily look into that. And the second question really is on uh, the carbon neutral plan and, and I guess the economic and social uh, appraisals for each of the different things that we could do. And I guess really that, uh, that links into what uh, Sarah has uh, been saying, uh, is that in the end there will, there will be many wider uh, benefits and, and we as elected members will have a choice to make um, about how we can intervene. Uh, the honest answer is that, you know, in that plan, it sets out some of the uh, enormous financial costs that we'd face. Uh, and that's not us passing the buck, that's us being honest with people about uh, how much uh, these things cost. And, and actually for some of the things, you know, we just don't have uh, the power to come round to every, uh, every home in the borough uh, and take out your gas boiler uh, and replace it with something else. And in all honesty, if we're gonna make uh, some of those environmental changes uh, that we really need to see, uh, those are the, the choices that people are going to need to uh, face up to individually. Um, also, um, people have seen in the media that our Cabinet Member for Finance, Councillor Kirby, uh, is communicating as much as he can with people about uh, the real cost that COVID uh, has had uh, on the borough. Uh, at the moment, we estimate that the cost to the council uh, could be anywhere in the region uh, of £50 million. Pounds. Uh, and to date, uh, we've received £17 million uh, from the government. Uh, so it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really bode well uh, for the future, uh, I have to say, uh, unless uh, the government are going to commit uh, to meeting all of the costs that we're facing uh, in this extraordinary, extraordinary uh, time. Um, I've got a question here, um, someone who's just asked uh, about whether the council has undertaken any reviews uh, of local statues or monuments in the area in the wake of protests uh, relating to the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. Um, obviously, that's something that we've been uh, talking through uh, today. Uh, we're carrying out a review of all of the monuments and historic figures uh, throughout Royal Greenwich um, that would be of concern to people. Uh, at the moment, uh, I haven't uh, had any notification that we have uh, any of those statues uh, that have had the similar impact that they have uh, in other areas. Um, I have had a number uh, of emails about road names, for example, uh, and that's something that we're going to have to uh, look into uh, and be uh, upfront with people about uh, moving forward, because obviously uh, this is a significant uh, area of growing tension. Um, just to say that in the past uh, few days, we have had a number of incidents of racist graffiti uh, in the borough. Uh, if you do come across uh, any graffiti, uh, of that nature, uh, please report it immediately to uh, the police uh, on 101. 
uh, we are working with our local police to make sure uh, that where that graffiti uh, appears, we make sure that police uh, officers attend the scene uh, and do the forensic work that we need to hopefully uh, catch the people uh, that are doing it. Um, and, and, and obviously, um, in previous times, people have shared that on social media. Uh, we'd ask you not to do that because actually that amplifies uh, that horribleness that they are uh, putting out there. But please do uh, as I report that to the police and, and us uh, as soon as possible so that we can get that uh, resolved. Um, and if, um, if in the same way that we're reviewing that work at the moment, uh, if people do have any concerns uh, that they would like to share with us, uh, please do uh, send them through. Uh, and I promise that we'll get on to uh, looking at those and investigating uh, as quickly as possible. So I think, oh, sorry. Uh, Danny, yeah. sorry, can I? Um, I don't know, I've been sent one question. I've been messaged one question. It's about lorries. It's something for Sisway to take up. Could I ask it? I yeah. mean, shall I, you know, may I re sort of recite it? Yeah. Um, so it goes, um, the high volume of development in the borough brings a large number of he heavy lorries, which are a significant danger to the lives of cyclists. Will the council put measures in place to minimise this risk, such as requiring low step direct vision lorries, like those used by the Thames Tideway Tunnel Works? Um, requiring them, uh, th that's basically it. Full utilisation of any vehicle and ensuring that maximum reuse and recycling of materials on, oh, that, that's a separate thing, Re um, that the materials are provided on site. But the first part is about um, low vision lorries, which um, enable the driver to see cyclists. Yeah, 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 thank you. It just so happens I've um, recently met with uh, Greenwich cyclists and this is something that they've been and lobbying us on and we're certainly going to uh, take that forward because if you know <laughs> safety of cyclists one of the biggest barrier for people getting on their bikes is safety and I know at the moment while the roads are you know you know they've become busier but when, when it's quiet you saw a lot of people getting out there because they felt safe but as, as traffic increases and these are the kind of measures that we're going to have to introduce to allow us to uh, maximize this golden opportunity of modal shift okay all right, well, uh, all that remains for me to say is thank you uh, very much for joining us. Uh, we are back, uh, I think, next week with uh, another session uh, of Ask Greenwich. You know, I'm looking uh, to, uh, we'll publish the details of uh, who that will be uh, with. I've uh, forgotten, uh, I'm afraid, but it's been a long day. Uh, so do forgive me. And uh, we'll see you uh, all then. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks. Thank everyone. you.